Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and on April 15th, 2020, TrueNAS Core is the new FreeNAS was announced. Basically, it's the convergence of the two products. And I have loaded here the latest version as of June 17th, the nightly build of TrueNAS. And I want to go over some of the features. I've been playing around with it and doing uh, some testing. And I, it's got some really great things that they've added on here. And I'm kind of excited about it. And it's getting closer to beta. So this is still not beta. This is still not ready for production. Uh, but it's still cool to play with. And if you, you know, hey, if you want to play with some of these fancy new features, you can load it yourself on there and give it a try and help with the progress of the product by filing bug reports and whatnot. But uh, we're going to dive into the features in just a second. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not. So go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. Will TrueNAS Core still be open source and free? The answer is 100% yes. Ever since this announcement, I've talked about it before on my channel here, uh, we keep repeating this, people keep asking it, but the answer still hasn't changed a few, several months, well, two months and two days later, the answer is still 100% yes. TrueNAS Core will not have fewer features than FreeNAS and TrueNAS Core will remain open source. So there's actually, and to point out, and this is uh, kind of the proof now a few months later, TrueNAS Core will have more feature than FreeNAS does today. So they've kept their word on it. So what are we going to, why did they merge them? I'll leave a link to all this and uh, that can be covered, but basically simplified uh, documentation, improved quality there when you're not maintaining two uh, separate pieces of software, even though they share most all the same code, once they get these all merged together and they only have one piece of code to maintain, it just gets a lot easier. So rapid development is going to occur. They have an entire matrix here for what the differences are between uh, the true NAS and the enterprise features that you'll get with the uh, enterprise feature only version, where that's the paid version. And it's not like they're encroaching on all of it. Matter of fact, one of the things that's important to remember here is a lot of these features have a lot more to do with the hardware. I mean, I'll leave you through this. I'm not going to go in detail on them, but things like visual enclosure management and the dual controller HA, it's not just a matter of enabling HA features. It's also a matter of actually having hardware that can properly support HA. So it's open source. And if you want to write your own because you found separate hardware than the hardware IX system makes, you want to make it redundant, that question comes up. Yes, you can go do that. It's open source and you can start building your own levels of redundancy if that's what you want. Uh, there's a few other little details like the fiber channel support and uh, I'll leave all those little things over here. They're not that significant. You notice the significant portion is all in the, well, version anyone can download, the fully open source free version. Uh, the other things that are in there, of course, are some of the telemetry things to contact them for support agreements. And generally speaking, home lab and end users don't want something that, well, phones home at all. Uh, so you're probably happy that feature does not come in there by default. All right, let's get to the product and talk about what's new. Metadata on Flash. Special SSD VDEVs can be used for metadata acceleration. This can include both file system metadata and dedupe tables. This is one of the core features of OpenZFS 2.0. And let me show you how some of these things work. So as we go over, I'm going to go over here and kind of show you where that feature exists. And what they've done is under pool operations, add VDEVs, you've got different options to add the cache, like in log, like before, hot spare, but then a special allocation class used to create fusion pools, uh, which was the name they adopted for these. So the fusion pools are special uh, blocks that be, can be used for metadata or dedupe. So there's certain scenarios uh, where that may be helpful. It'll be something maybe I'll explore a little bit deeper in the future. If you read through, they're still writing some of the documentation of like the best scenarios to use them and how they will help. But I believe, uh, from what I've read so far, it's going to be most helpful in scenarios where you have like a bunch of databases residing in a ZFS system where there's a lot of metadata requests going back and forth. And what this does, it's doing it at the file system level. So you're not going to specify that a jail lives specifically in there or anything like that. What you're going to do in this scenario is use this, turn it on, and it will then provide better performance if you have those specific use cases. And then those 
specific drives that would be more likely, you know, faster uh, faster drives is where the metadata call will go. This gives you a, a really interesting scenario where instead of just caching something, you go a little bit deeper. And uh, I really like this. I'm looking forward to these features. Now, I haven't explored much of deduping, but some of the same things in there. Uh, deduplication tables are stored in this special VDEB type. These VDEBs must be sized X gig for each X terabyte of general storage. So, uh, I don't have the sizing specific guides for them, but that's going to be another feature that uh, comes in there. So having these kind of like faster drives and then you have the larger pool because, well, you know, the spinning rust drives are still going to be around at least for a little while longer. We haven't had enough breakthroughs in storage uh, that we can retire them and they still make up the majority of the uh, disks out there when it comes to people who need large storage arrays. But there are certain things you may want faster. Now, alternatively, some people will just build a specific uh, VDEV or a specific pool that are just SSDs for their fast storage and that, this kind of gives you an opportunity to spread, spread it uh, differently so you can have one single pool but then have that faster performance drives in there as a caching method. So, well, metadata caching essentially, putting it up, put it where it's fastest. Really cool feature. Uh, I'm looking forward to diving into that. And that's right here is what they were talking about, that fusion pools right below there. Uh, SSD wear monitoring, any SSD, boot, L2, ARCs, log, or VDEV can be monitored for wear and alerts created. So as SSDs become more mainstream, that's really cool that that's uh, going to be in there. Data encryption, specific data sets can be selected or deselected for encryption with user-provided key when replicating a data set to another TrueNAS. That key does not have to be provided, so the data can be transmitted and stored in the original encrypted state. This is really neat. Now, let me show you how this works. So Normally, you can encrypt when you're building a pool. And we have this right here to show us, you know, new icon to show us that it's unlocked. And then I have like this test share right here. And let's go and edit the encryption options. And by default, it inherits encryption options. And instead of inheriting, you can set specific passphrases for each one of the data sets on there. So this is a rewrite of the way it works. It doesn't use the old system uh, as it used to. It's still going to be accelerated with AES and I processors, which any most modern systems have. Um, so it's not going to be that much of a performance. Matter of fact, it's likely in <clears throat> and we don't have the numbers on this yet, but the new performance should be better with this. And the reason why they, they're not doing it like on a per drive basis, if, as I understood it, is doing it right in the file system in the ZFS level. Um, and it's just goes, supposed to be a much more efficient way to handle the encryption in here. Um, I don't have like said, every detail on it, but I they did it and it's really, from everything I've read so far, it looks really nice in terms of uh, performance enhancement and being able to get more granular with your, uh, you know, what you use for keys and what you use as a passphrase because it does support both keys and passphrase just like before. Faster ZFS boot, that's included in there because it's more parallel processing for importing ZFS pools when there's many drives. Asynchronous trim, trim commands free up space, particularly with SSDs by making these trim commands asynchronous. They scale and perform better, so that's really good. ZFS Linux compatibility, Linux and FreeBSD peer operating system for OpenZFS 2.0. Compressed deduplication encryption data can be efficiently replicated from a Linux host to a TrueNAS system for backup and archive. So that's really nice there. Accelerated ZFS, several performance improvements have been reduced. Both IOPS and the CPU cycles required more features, higher performance together with bigger, big win for ZFS users. Now this one is OpenVPN client and server. Let's look at that. That's right here in this. So we have the client and the server. So you can now take your system and tie it to an open VPN tunnel, and maybe because you need to be able to tie it to one uh, a server that's elsewhere. This could be ways to transport data back and forth across instead of doing it uh, over SSH. Now, SSH is encrypted, but you know why not encapsulate it in a VPN as well? So there's one option if you're doing it replicated. Uh, other options are you need to disconnect to another server for whatever whatever other reasons. Maybe there's just data on here and you want to use some of the plugins and have it all consolidated. I have not. Uh, really tested this, but I, it's nice that they added it right here. Now, right below it, OpenVPN server. So this is acting, the FreeNAS acting as a client where it's going to connect to a server. And then this acting as a server 
itself. So this being able to access a server, so if you don't have, let's say, a firewall or some other VPN server, you can have something that connects directly to your TrueNAS system, and it can act as a server for those connections. And that's going to be really handy because there are some times where maybe you only want users to connect directly to this so they can share some files, but they don't need access to the greater network and you can just restrict them right to here and do shares across that. So uh, neat that they've added it and it's you know, added right here as a service in the system. Next is two-factor authentication. For in-key security, two-factor authentication is highly desirable. And uh, that's just right here. So if we go over here to system, 2FA, enable enable it, uh, confirm, put in the QR code and standard TOTP authentication. Nice addition to the system there. Uh, API keys. Access the REST WebSockets API can now be done via API keys. Keys can be created and revoked directly via the web GUI for security. Now this is really, I, I like this feature a lot. So we're gonna call this uh, Tom's key add. And now it's going to generate an API key. And I can copy it to the clipboard. Now, the advantage of an API key is I can now give an application access to my system without giving it the password. And I can delegate. So let's say I had different apps I wanted to control via the API. By the way, there's actually a lot of expandability you can do because maybe you have some script that adds users. Maybe you have some script that performs some task or function uh, as an API call that you don't want to do through the UI. There's actually, especially in the larger scale system, uh, enterprise level systems where these are deployed, you'll find people putting together scripts that automate certain tasks. And having an API is really handy for that. And going a step further, having it so we know what applications we've attached to our TrueNAS system and maybe as they expire, get rid of them, or if we need to remove something, that is awesome. So we can reset the key, but you can't display the key a second time. So each time it only displays the key and then we, the key is gone after this. So I can copy it to clipboard, which well, thank you for anyone who puts copy to clipboard when you're generating long um, alphanumerics like that. Uh, it's just really handy. But we can add another one, we can add another one, and I have documentation link here for that. So you understand what you've given access to. And if you change root passwords and things like that, it well, it's not going to have any effect on the API key. So that's a welcome feature. And I think we're going to start seeing more people expand on that and write different utilities where they can go, hey, I can just script this for you uh, with this particular utility. Uh, KMIP support, key management, interoperability protocols, and enterprise-grade approach to securing systems and data through centralized key management system. This feature will be able to TrueNAS Enterprise to secure your devices or data sets. Uh, so that's going to be more of an enterprise feature, but it's probably not something home lab or people using it. It's, it's you know, global key management. Um, Definitely important right there. And that specifically is listed, I will mention, though, in the enterprise-only features. Also of note in... If you're going over here, go to support. Uh, one of the ways they're gonna be doing this is it's still gonna be the same download. You'll just enter your license to unlock those particular features if you're an enterprise user. Uh, if not, it's basically just a you know the standard open source one. So I, I do like that little noted ad that they had here. So it's kind of like, well, do you have to re-download or re-upgrade this? What if I want to start with the basic, move to that later? Um, and I'm not positive. I'll let them confirm this. I would assume that if your license expires for one of these, it kind of just goes back into the mode where those couple extra features that you get are missing um, and just works normally. So this is nice because if you lose support on some of the other ones, now you have different errors. Having one converged system means, well, yeah, once your license runs out and you have one of these older systems, uh, it just essentially can be downgraded by the license expiring without actually changing or reloading the operating system. You'll just lose that couple little things like this KMIP um, or any of the features listed over here that's in there, for example, like the dual controller HA system. But like I said, that's also hardware dependent as well. TrueNAS Command Dataset Management. Um, this is still something I'm going to have as a completely separate video. Uh, True Command has joined is joined at the hip with TrueNAS and will provide some exciting features, including snapshots, replicating, migrating data sets between systems. Uh, I'm going to dedicate a separate review to this because there's a couple things they've done here. And one of them is status of true command is shown up right here. You can connect this to a true command cloud uh, instance. And 
provide API keys. They have a complete system that they're working on so you can control all your systems in the cloud. Now they're even thinking about, and I don't know all the limitations yet, but they're gonna have like some free versions for people with less than 50 drives and then they're gonna have uh, paid versions where you can manage everything in the cloud and manage multiple servers. I don't uh, think it's a real problem for the home users or in the home lab market because they generally aren't going to want to, you know, have everything attached to some cloud, usually the opposite from a lot of the uh, home user support, but it's cool that they have it because the, from an enterprise standpoint and from our standpoint of managing uh, free NAS and true NAS systems for our, our clients, having everything in one dashboard in the cloud that we pay a subscription for actually sounds pretty attractive being able to uh, manage, especially as some clients scale out and have a lot of different servers in there. So it's kind of a neat feature, but it, it goes a little beyond the scope and it's specifically a cloud management platform through here. So uh, I'll dive into that in its own separated video at some time uh, soon. Uh, and then you have plenty of comments and everything else below and uh, the nightlies keep coming on there. One thing I didn't see in here, but was actually really, it, it's the little things as you're using it, you notice. And we go here to users, you notice how it says root and Tom, and that's it. And we click over here, it'll show all the other users. That was actually something I was always kind of annoyed by is like, I don't want to see all the users because the, there's all the different users that are actually services running on the system. I like that when you're setting up on the uh, TrueNAS core that this just shows that by default. Now, the last thing I want to mention is I'm going to miss the shark. So this is the dashboard on the TrueNAS system, and this is the one on the FreeNAS system. And I kind of say it because I have this little drawn shark right here, and we've doodled a couple sharks. Uh, this was actually drawn, uh, drawn by the uh, folks over at the Freenas team a few years ago, and I've always kept this pinned to the wall. Uh, well, they sent us a swag shirt because they liked some of the videos before I got to know them. Uh, that goes back about three or four years now, uh, but I like it. It's one of the little keepsakes I have on my wall over here. Uh, so I, I'll still remember the shark. I'm going to miss it, but I do the new dashboard overall outside of the, the uh, shark logo, which I'm not here to debate their logo choices. Um, we, it's not bad, but I, I still like the shark logo. Anyways, uh, I do like the new interface. They've really done a nice job of on this dashboard kind of giving you more information you know little little highlights the mouse overs and things like that being able to go to reports the reports still look like this i know some people are going to be clamoring going well i would love a more advanced reporting that'll come with the uh, true command system which does have some better reporting but for the basics and actually from a daily usage standpoint uh, as someone who you know troubleshoots and works on a lot of free nas and true nas systems i'm I find it very adequate to get the information I need uh, without too many problems. And even even though the reports are not uh, the most visually pleasing reports out there, they're effective at giving me the information I need. And that's actually what matters a lot to me is uh, actionable intelligence more so than eye candy. Eye candy is cool. And don't get me wrong. There's always room for improvement, but uh, actionable intelligence is the most important part. Uh, this also, uh, I notice it will give you like the hottest temperature, uh, highest CPU usage. So it's Definitely a lot more in-depth than the current one right here, which this is uh, FreeNAS 11.3 uh, U3.2 here. So this is the current one. This is my production system, and this is our demo system. A big shout out to the folks over at Tech Supply Direct because they provided us with this server right here. I have a review on it. This is the R730 XD. Um, if anyone's wondering, it runs the TrueNAS perfectly fine. I've had no problems at all with it. and uh, But I'm looking forward to you know th this as a product. I'll be... Upgrading. I think once it goes beta, maybe I'll take one of my machines and throw it in the beta so I can do some reporting. Um, nightlies, I'm a little bit more sketch with when it comes to uh, actually putting me in production. But uh, so far, it the new product is looking great. I really like the you know overall look of it. The um, where they're going with it, the fact they've added OpenVPN. I also seen in here, and it's not something I've explored either. Uh, but if you look under here, and one little detail I noticed was right here, it said WireGuard, and they do have an article uh, from earlier this year about WireGuard and it becoming popular and enabled. So um, seeing them kind of bringing up more than just a blog post, but also a listing here, I'm actually hoping WireGuard gets maybe an interface uh, more than command line in here. That'd be kind of cool. But uh, that's something that's going to be in the true NAS as well. Thought I'd bring it up and mention because a lot of people ask about different VPN options. Because if I say open VPN, someone says, what about WireGuard? Uh, it's got some performance enhancements and it's, you know, uh, reasonably easy to set up. And yes, so exciting 
about that. Uh, that'll probably be a separate video altogether about VPN options, uh, WireGuard and OpenVPN inside of the new TrueNAS core. So I'll leave links to where all this uh, can be found, where you can get this, uh, which is pretty easy. Go to ixsystems.com, go to freenas.com. You can download this. Uh, you can switch to Nightly's yourself if you want. Uh, you go over to System and you go to Update. And there's no new updates available on here, but you can switch to the TrueNAS Nightly Train. FYI, once you switch to this, you're on the new train. Uh, there's not, it removes the ability to go backwards. Let me show you in our system here. Go here, update. So if I were to switch to the nightly builds for mine, uh, it would then not allow me to roll backwards on that. Just an FYI, once you cross the point of no return, um, that's a thing that can happen. You may break things. Now you do have the ability here to roll it back again. I don't know and I haven't tried it to see if you can go back to these without any problem, but uh, just be warned and back up everything and uh, testing at your own risk because these are still nightlies, not betas. So, uh, but they're getting, as far as I know right now, because we're getting close to where the beta, they're feature complete just not bug free yet. Uh, so I don't think there's any more features can be added. So I'm looking forward to these. And once the beta comes out, I'll be doing a more updated video and I'll continue testing with uh, the servers that we have here. Actually, I have to build another one uh, to test some of the encryption replication features because right now um, I'm not clear that I can replicate to an old version and have that encryption work. I, it may work, I don't know, but I'm gonna actually try it with two properly uh, on the same version systems to make sure it works flawlessly before I uh, really dive into whether or not how many versions versions back it will go. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.